flying in from Malta to enjoy about five hours in Pisa. Bus to the railway station. Store the bags. And then a bus to the Campo dei Miracoli, the field of miracles, to get our first sight of the famous Leaning Tower. The good weather appears to have forsaken us, so we head into the cathedral to pray for sunshine. Built between 1068 and 1118, it is magnificent. And when built, was the finest in Italy. The Romanesque style of architecture, augmented by the simple patterns of Islam, with intricate marble facades and densely patterned arabesque mosaics. Islamic patterns in a church? How come that happened? The granite Corinthian columns between the nave and the aisle came originally from the mosque of Palermo in Sicily, captured by the Pisans in 1063. Very nice too. The influence of Islamic architecture due to Pisan merchants at that time trading with Moorish Spain and North Africa and being impressed by its beauty, though the Pisan Romanesque style clearly dominates. It is still one of Italy's major monuments. Galileo is believed to have formulated his theory about the movement of a pendulum here, as he watched the swinging of the incense lamp that hung from the ceiling of the nave at that time. It's now been replaced with a larger one. The beautiful carved pulpit was made by Giovanni Pisano and is one of the masterworks of medieval sculpture. It's both ornate and elaborate. The upper section has nine panels of dramatic scenes from the New Testament, carved in white marble. It is indeed an awe-inspiring building. The last time I saw the tower was in 1968. I'd boarded a train in Rome and was heading to Paris, then London. As we left Pisa station, there it was. This time I get to see it for five hours instead of five seconds. In 2001, after a decade of work to arrest the progressing tilt, the tower reopened to the public and we took advantage of the opportunity to view it in all its glory, from below, from inside, and yes, from the top. It's 185 feet tall and though from the outside it appears to have several floors, it's actually the hollow campanile or bell tower of the cathedral, which has a staircase which winds up to the top. It weighs 14,500 tons, but is only supported by its walls, made up of stone, lime and water, covered with a 
thin marble facade. The tower's tilt began even during construction, caused by the ground being softer on the south side. The tilt continued to increase until in 1990 it leaned 5.5 degrees and that's 17 feet off the perpendicular. That literally defies the laws of physics. Professor John Berland, who worked on the restoration, quoted, I think it's miraculous. We couldn't get our computers to make it stand up. It should have already fallen over. The problem was there the day construction began in 1173. The site had been an ancient lagoon and not suitable for such a high tower. The lagoon had been created by the rivers Arno and Alsa, and the subsoil tended to be soft and wet. The building leaned so much, construction stopped in 1178. The delay in building lasted a hundred years. It turned out that that gave the soil time to settle. The building initially tilted 11 inches to the north, but as they resumed building, it began to tilt the other way. To correct this, the masons made the columns on the south side taller, bending the building a little so that it has a slight banana shape. In 1278, work stopped again, just short of the top floor, and it was 82 years later that the bell chamber was added. Believe it or not, this was perpendicular, not leaning like the rest of the tower. But with two fewer steps and larger bells on the north side, in an attempt to compensate. But this addition upset the stability and caused the tower to resume its leaning. The good news is that the problem is not only fixed, but we can go in and up the 296 steps. Admission to the tower is restricted to 40 people at a time. So after a briefing at the bottom, up we go. There's the cathedral bar down there. As we ascend, the magnificent views unfold. When we reach the top, we get a bird's eye view of the Duomo and Baptistry. And a close-up look at the bells the small ones and the large ones. So we're at the top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa, about 300 steps and uh, beautiful views and since we started coming up the sun came out. The Mediterranean in the distance, at the top great views over the city. After descending we have a little time to look around and just enjoy the sight. After all these years, the tower is still beautiful. The flag of Pisa flying at the top. The cathedral getting a facelift. And from some angles, we can discern the banana shape. Then suddenly, guess what happened? No! Most tourists get a shot of people holding it up. I thought I'll get a shot of it falling over. A 
after some great Italian cuisine, the last shots. ride back to the railway station. Over the Arno River. arrived at 2 p.m. from Malta and left at 10 p.m. to London with about five hours in the city. Now that was a great visit. <laughs> 